Welcome to another episode of Cold Fusion. In April of 2022, the singer Selena Gomez was in an interview with Good Morning America. She had done something that most people have thought about doing, but never actually followed through with. The pop star had mentioned that she'd taken a break from the internet, not just for a week or a month, but 4.5 years. And she claimed that it changed her life. It has changed my life completely. I am happier. I am more present. I connect more with people. It makes me feel normal. I do personally know others that have done a similar thing. It seems like there's a change in the air. I don't know if you can feel it, but the internet can be an increasingly tiring place. Now, leaving the internet entirely is a bit extreme for most, but millions of young people are doing the next closest thing. They're ditching their smartphones for feature phones, also known as dumb phones. It's a movement that's being dubbed the dumb phone revolution. You are watching Cold Fusion TV. The era of the smartphone has brought us unparalleled convenience, connection, and entertainment in the palm of our hand. But since it was introduced in its true form in 2007 with the release of the iPhone and the subsequent rise of social media giants, it has become clear that there's also a downside. It's no secret that smartphones have hacked our brains. The typical phone user touches their device 2,617 times every day. Interestingly, Half of all of those pickups happen within the first three minutes of the previous one. It's no longer just a habit, but a bodily function. On average, three hours are spent staring at a tiny screen. It affects people emotionally, from guilty time wasting to depression and isolation in young adults. On the other hand, there's the relentless spying by governments and tech companies. For every societal change, there's a subsequent pendulum swing in the opposite direction, and right now, there's a weak but growing underground movement of young people opting to put their smartphones aside for dumb phones instead. A device that can only do phone calls, text, and simple tasks is refreshing to them. According to the BBC, Google searches for the term dumb phone have jumped by 89% between 2018 and 2021. The global purchase of dumb phones hit 1 billion units last year. This compares to 1.4 billion smartphones sold last year, a decline of 12.5% versus 2020. A 2021 study by the accountancy group Deloitte said that one in 10 mobile users in the UK had a dumb phone. And among these is 17-year-old Robin West. She got rid of her smartphone over two years ago. Her current mobile cost her just eight pounds. Plus, there's no monthly data bill to worry about. She tells the BBC she'll never buy another smartphone. Quote, I'm happy with my brick. I don't think it limits me. I'm definitely more proactive. I didn't notice until I bought a brick phone how much a smartphone was taking over my life. I had a lot of social media apps on it and I didn't get as much work done as I was always on my phone. Most of her friends couldn't wrap their heads around it. Quote, everyone thinks it's just a temporary thing. They're like, so when are you getting a smartphone? Are you getting one next week? As small as this story is, it actually begs an interesting question. What if the essential need for a smartphone in the modern world is mostly an illusion? Everyone used to live just fine without one 15 years ago, and perhaps it's all just a modern anomaly. Shubham Agwal, over at the publication Digital Trends, switched to a Nokia 8110, and he echoes this sentiment. Quote, I felt hijacked by my smartphone and the companies behind it. Switching to a feature phone disabused me from the illusion that my life will come to a halt without my smartphone. It made me realize how insignificant most of what I do on my phone actually is. Some YouTubers also share their experience with using dumb phones. I can hardly believe this, but I have been using a dumb phone for six months and I told myself I would stick with this phone for 30 days at least to see how it goes and it's now been six months but there's a lot of places I've noticed you have to scan a QR code in order to get service and this phone obviously can't scan a QR code and you know open up a link or an app 
they don't give menus anymore. Like if you go to dine in the restaurant, they don't give you a menu. There's just a QR code on the table and you're supposed to scan the QR code to read the menus. Usually I'm with someone who has a smartphone and can comment in it. Personally, it frustrates me because I'm choosing not to have a smartphone, but I know there are a lot of people who just don't have a smartphone. For you know, not by choice. And those people are kind of excluded from certain spaces. So I really don't like that. Like there are no notifications. So it's not just like me not picking up and opening the phone and voluntarily entering into something, but it's also that like the phone doesn't beep or grab for my attention unless someone is calling or texting me. And that is super amazing. This device is just a tool that I can use when I need to use it but it doesn't ask anything of me if I'm not using it. It just sits there and I really, really love that. There are a couple things that I've learned that are just like huge life-changing benefits um, to using a dumb phone. And these are things that I honestly didn't even expect. Number one is that I am incredibly calm now and I don't identify as someone who has anxiety. Like I wouldn't have said that I'm an anxious person. But after switching, I realized that there probably was a lot of anxiety around my iPhone that has since gone away. And I think it's just that I'm not constantly in tune with um, the internet and you know things that are going on. And the biggest place that I notice this is when I have some downtime. If I'm waiting in a line or waiting at an appointment or something like that, I previously would grab my iPhone and I would start consuming content right away and now I can't do that so it just allows me this like very valuable space for my brain to just take a break and just kind of sit there and think and this is something that I don't think we get enough of in our culture. I honestly surprised myself that I didn't return to my iPhone at any point in the past six months. I didn't set a rule for myself that like I can't ever use it again. And I'm not gonna say that I won't ever use a smartphone again, who knows. Um, but I just haven't wanted to, and I still don't want to. The peace that I feel from using a dumb phone is like, such a huge benefit it's worth some of the minor inconveniences and having a smartphone just feels a little like unnecessary tech expert professor sandra watcher a senior research fellow in artificial intelligence at oxford university explains why younger people want simpler phones quote your smartphone is your entertainment center your news generator your navigation system your diary your dictionary and your wallet she adds that smartphones always want to grab your attention with notifications and updates and breaking news constantly disrupting your day. Quote, This can keep you on edge and might even be agitating. It can be overwhelming. It makes sense that some of us are now looking for simpler technologies and think that dumb phones might offer a return to simpler times. It might leave more time to fully concentrate on a single task and engage with it more purposefully. It might even calm people down. Studies have shown that too much choice can create unhappiness and agitation. Dumb phone advocates will tell you that they can be very useful even if temporary, whether you want to be present for a holiday or focused on a project or just need some time back in your day, but you still want to be able to call someone in an emergency. A new player in the fledgling modern dumb phone space is the New York company, Lightphone. It's a bit more capable than an old Nokia, as it can play music and podcasts and link by Bluetooth to headphones. The company recorded its strongest financial performance in 2021, with sales up 150% when compared to 2020. The Light Phone is the brainchild of Joe Hollier and Kai Tang. In 2014, they announced the Kickstarter project. In their words, it was a way to combat technology addiction. In 2015, the first version Light Phone had a 50,000 person waitlist. Lightphone co-founder Kay Tang stated that the device was initially created just as a temporary break from the smartphone to use on the weekend, for example. But now, half the firm's customers use it as their primary device. And this is very interesting. He's also made some colorful comments. Quote, If aliens came to Earth, they'd think that mobile phones are the superior species controlling human beings. And it's not going to stop. It's only going to get worse. Consumers are realizing that something is wrong and we want to offer an alternative. Now this next bit is key. 
the firm's main customers are aged between 25 and 35. Initially, the company was expecting buyers to be much older, but the fact that it's millennials that are buying really tells you something. We're the generation that grew up before the internet, but also with it, and now it seems like we're getting tired. Another player in the space is Punked. Their device, the MPO2, is another simple offering that suits the new brand of minimalists. As time progresses, I'm sure we're going to see a lot more of these low-tech startups. And just when I was finishing up this video, although they're clearly not a startup, Nokia has entered the picture as well. They just announced a new feature phone with Bluetooth headphones built right in, so it seems like they can see more demand for basic feature phones that have been updated for modern times. In 2017, Nokia relaunched its 3310 handset. First released in 2000, the relaunch drummed up a lot of interest and sparked a small revival for the simple. Week-long battery life and being virtually indestructible was tempting for those looking for something that didn't want to get in the way. Five years ago, Prismerk Olenjiniksuk, a psychologist, swapped out his smartphone for a 3310. Initially, he wanted a longer-lasting battery. However, he soon realized that there were many other benefits. Quote, Before, I would always be stuck on my phone, checking anything and everything, browsing Facebook or the news, or other facts that I didn't need to know. Now I have more time for my family and me. A huge benefit is that I'm not addicted to liking, sharing, commenting, or describing my life to other people. Now I have more privacy. However, he does mention a drawback. Before, I'd be checking everything, such as buses and restaurants on my smartphone when traveling. Now that is impossible, so I've learned to do all of these things beforehand at home. I got used to it. And this is the downside for most people. There's no navigation, bus and train timetables, no web browsing or news. But it's an inconvenience that has a point. It's to keep you in reality more often, for whatever that's worth to you. Maybe a good compromise would be to just have a mode on your smartphone that switches it into a dumb mode. The operating system would completely change into one that only allows for calls, text, navigation, and audio. So, will this be a lasting trend? I think it will continue, but ultimately, it remains to be seen. As our lives become ever more digital, people that opt out could find it harder to function in society. It's interesting to think about. And on that note, what do you guys think? Do you think this trend is going to grow? And would you ever take the plunge to buy a dumb phone? Feel free to discuss in the comment section below. All right, so that's about it from me. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, definitely feel free to have a browse around this channel. For those of you who follow my music, I've just released a new album on Bandcamp called Hello World. It'll be on Spotify soon. Also, there's going to be an extended discussion of this topic on my podcast through the web. So check it out. I'll leave all the links below. Anyway, my name is Dagogo, and you've been watching Cold Fusion, and I'll see you again soon for the next episode. Sincerely, thanks for watching. Have a good one.